Hello and welcome to Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene podcast. This podcast is all about how to attain healthier skin. You may be struggling with a skin condition such as psoriasis or eczema or acne, or perhaps a condition that causes the skin to become unhealthy, such as PCOS or irritable bowel or Crohn's disease. Regardless of what your condition is, healthy skin is attained by having a healthy body. So my mission is about bringing a huge array of experts to your attention in various areas of health. I hope you find this information knowledgeable and insightful and helpful for your specific journey in having better health. Remember to always connect with us through Facebook at Dr. Irene Prantelos, Psoriasis and Healthy Skin. You can email me at info at I hope you enjoy the show and please feel free to give us any sort of insight into what you feel you need to hear in future episodes. Hello and welcome to Salubrious Skin with Dr. Irene. Today I am talking about nutrition for psoriatic disease. So people with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. Now, when I hear someone talk about that their dermatologist has said food has no bearing on their skin or their joints, it, it creates a visceral effect in me because scientists have proven time and time again there are various elements in what we eat that will create inflammation and exacerbate psoriatic disease. So today I want to dispel all myths and uh, misconceptions and I want to be clear as to why these are going to have a positive impact in, in creating better health in our skin and our joints. And ultimately, psoriatic disease is a, is a systemic disease. So when we are creating a body with less inflammation, which ultimately helps our skin and our joints, then we're going to prevent metabolic disease from coming up and you know getting insulin resistance, diabetes, heart disease, and stroke. So these are really important things that we must do and more so understand where the changes need to happen and how we can do it. So now uh, psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis is an inflammatory condition. It's an autoimmune disease. And as I said, it's a systemic disease. So what would cause these diseases? What are the triggers? What, what triggers these inflammation? So stress. Stress, I think we all kind of know anyone suffering from psoriatic disease knows that stress is usually a pretty big factor. Uh, sometimes it'll, switch, it'll initiate the gene to be switched on, other times it will continue to uh, exacerbate a flare up. So stress is one thing that we all need to make sure we're mindful of. Uh, we have uh, tools and resources to deal with our stress. Sometimes we can't change um, being stressed. So you know, we need tools to assist us in, in, in managing that. And that could be things like meditation and relaxation. And, and if you follow some um, episodes, uh, we've got some future episodes lined up around this. And we have spoken about emotions in uh, some past episodes. Check out episode five, I think, with Shireen Blom. That's a really good one where she does uh, runs us through a meditation. Now, let's move on. Um, infections, metabolic disease, uh, genetics, hormonal factors, and of course, our diet. Our diet will increase inflammation. And so with psoriatic disease, inflammation will, will either um, cause the immune system to respond in the skin, uh, resulting in the overshedding of the skin cells. So instead of a 28-day period of of skin shedding, it takes four days. So that's where psoriatic lesions form on the body. And then with psoriatic disease, uh, psoriatic arthritis specifically, it's the joints that are targeted from the inflammation upsetting the joints. Now, the one type of psoriasis I've seen that doesn't seem to be as strongly affected by diet is glutate psoriasis. And that is one that's generated by uh, infection. Now, when the lesions are there, it is important to minimise inflammatory food, so to allow you to recover. But what I've noticed is once the lesions are recovered and the person gets over that flare-up, 
uh, eating foods that I'm going to recommend people avoid doesn't seem to be a trigger for glutate psoriasis. So that's something I think that's quite individual. And I should mention that all of us are very unique in the way we are and our, our genetic makeup and also the progression of our illness. So, you know, where one thing might really upset one person may not be as uh, detrimental to another. But the foods that I'm going to say that people should avoid are things that we all kind of really, to be honest, should be avoiding anyway. So they're not um, things that you may, you may think are, are foreign. Okay, so as I said, we need to uh, stop the triggers that lead to the inflammation. And when we're talking about food, the triggers usually stem around sugar, alcohol, greasy fatty food, takeaway, um, dairy, gluten. Now, gluten has scientifically been proven to increase inflammation in the skin, in, in the body rather, sorry, in the body. But obviously for psoriasis sufferers, it's in the skin. And there is also a study uh, that came out that identified um, various pesticides, Roundup specifically, that have um, contributed to toxins in our body that make us more sensitive to gluten as well. So there are definitely various elements that gluten um, needs to be avoided for people with psoriatic disease. You don't need celiac disease to avoid gluten. There are so many people gluten affects. You, you know, it is obviously very immediate for people to be affected by um, gluten when they've got celiacs. But for people like ourselves, we don't necessarily have that immediate response. It can take up to 72 hours to have that response. So uh, other foods are spicy hot foods, um, wheat and yeast, uh, cashews, legumes, peas as well. But, you know, a few amounts of peas is okay. But generally the legumes are something that are quite um, disruptive to our skin. And obviously soft drinks, things that are laden with um, sugar. Now, when we eat these foods, what essentially happens is IgG antibodies are released. So these are antibodies that are released from a food intolerance. Anyone who has a food intolerance will have these IgG antibodies released. These antibodies will then circulate throughout the bloodstream and initiate an inflammatory response. And wherever our weak point is, so people with psoriasis, our weak point is our skin. People with psoriatic arthritis, their weak point is their joints. So wherever your weak point is, the inflammation goes there and initiates that response. So for us to heal our skin and joints, we need to prevent inflammation from entering the body and we need to also address the inflammation that's already there, that's creating the flare-up. And that's where treatment usually comes in. Personally, I don't believe food on its own will eliminate the inflammation. Its role is really focused on preventing further from inflammation from entering the body and uh, creating a situation where it's really hard to treat the, the disease and and that's where the problems arise with um, taking stronger medications and that sort of thing. So, you know, I'm not here to tell anyone what treatment to do. That's not something that uh, I think is my role. I think that um, when it comes to treatment, we all uh, try everything and we independently will, will respond differently to various treatments and the, the focus of this podcast is really centered around eating a diet that will make your treatment work even better. So the three areas of, of uh, research scientists have proven is a considerable um, factor for us to identify food has an impact on our health is, like I said, gluten. Gluten increases uh, inflammation. Now, we've also been shown that uh, metabolic syndrome is very prominent in people with moderate to severe psoriasis. Uh, psoriasis. So that is greater than 3% of the body affected. You know, 3 to 10% is the moderate. So greater than 3%, you will have uh, 
uh, be in the moderate range. And so basically you will most likely have insulin resistance. Now, scientists have also proven gluten increases insulin resistance. So I do have another um, podcast show on insulin resistance and you can hear that and I identify what it is and what we can do. But the truth is that gluten needs to be avoided for this specific reason. The second thing is, is that uh, scientists have also identified obesity as being a factor. So having abdominal weight, you know, they had a study where they had two groups, one was of healthy weight and one was uh, categorized as overweight and obese. And they were given the same Western medicine treatment. And what they found is that um, people that were leaner responded much more favorable than the people that were overweight. So keeping our bodies lean and healthy will make our treatments work better. And the best way to do that is by eating a very healthy, clean diet. So that's another reason why. And thirdly, leaky gut syndrome. Leaky gut syndrome has been proven a reason to, um, to lead to uh, problems associated with the way we process food and, we'll, and the way we digest food. And unfortunately, when we have a leaky gut, uh, unmetabolized toxins enter our bloodstream. And our bloodstream doesn't like to be a garbage dump. So when there's um, unmetabolized toxins entering the bloodstream, what happens is an autoimmune response is, is happening. And so in that respect, our body then reacts and causes disease. So that is the reason why we need to change our diet. So what do we eat? You know, that's the question. What do we eat? We need to be eating plenty of green leafy vegetables. Green leafy vegetables are basically delivering chlorophyll and have an anti-inflammatory effect on our body. So, and also um, they actually deliver tyrosine. So they deliver nutrients to help our adrenals. And obviously when we've been quite stressed, it can upset our adrenal health. And by delivering those sort of nutrients into our um, diet, we are helping our adrenals work healthier and better which will ultimately lead to healthier skin and joints. So green leafy vegetables, eating seasonal, always eat seasonal. Don't eat um, things that are out of our season. You know, we live in a global community, so we have watermelon accessible to us all year round. We have all these vegetables and fruits accessible to us all year round. And, and the only way you can really identify is in your fruit shops, um, they, I don't necessarily know in the supermarkets if they do this, but I do know in the fruit shops, they do have, you know, product from USA or product from Australia, uh, and, and always stick to your local community. So if you're in Australia, buy only Australian fresh pro produce. If you're in America, you only buy, uh, produce grown there because different climates are, basically producing um, fruits and vegetables that are complementary for that climate. So for instance, in summer, the weather is warm and we don't necessarily want to be eating hot spicy food when it's warm. We need to be eating cooler things when it's warm. So melons are very much prevalent in the summer months. But as we move into winter, the environment gets cold and so our body needs more warmer food. Now, when we're talking about psoriasis, we don't necessarily want to be eating spicy food or anything like that because that's going to upset our skin and joints. But what you're wanting is definitely to be avoiding cold things because what happens is you upset the digestive system and you can potentially create food allergies by eating fruits and vegetables that are out of season. So really, really super important to eat um, seasonal fruits and vegetables and you might go to your local farmers market that's another way of um, knowing what's in season and also at your organic store you'll find that they only have a very small selection that's because they only really stick to what's in season now as far as meats are concerned uh, I would really recommend keeping to chicken turkey and fish uh, a little bit of lamb Best to have really lean lamb. Avoid having fatty lamb because the fat is quite inflammatory. Now, I don't mean fat in general, but I mean animal fat. Animal fat is quite inflammatory, but, you know, um, 
fats in general like olive oil or coconut oil or avocado oil they're quite good for us so that's very different to animal fat animal fat is not ideal so eating lamb that's um, very lean like um, lamb fillets i know they're very expensive cut but they have no fat really on them and that would be perfectly fine uh, when it comes to drinking loads of water you know two to three liters of water sporadically throughout the day i wouldn't be encouraging you drinking all that in one hit because that's not great for the kidneys uh, but i would definitely encourage you to have filtered over tap because um, sometimes there's some nasties in there that can upset our skin and joints so best to have filtered water the other thing you want to be having is uh you know uh if you have milks and things like that you would have mostly almond milk or rice milk uh, rice milk is very sweet on its own so if it's too sweet for you you can mix it with a bit of soy milk i know there's a big huge uh thing around about soy and that's because it's genetically modified if you can get non-genetically modified soy milk then that's good um, now the whole concept of phytoestrogens that research that was surrounding uh, soy milk and phytoestrogens was um, huge huge quantities of, of milk consumed in the day so people aren't going to have that in a splash of cereal or, or whatever so or will have a glass a glass a day of soy milk is not a big deal just make sure it's just the genetically modified that's concerning and that's the same thing with corn when you get organic corn it's not genetically modified so you know you're perfectly fine with that now as far as cereals are concerned you know that's pretty tricky because they always add sugar into cereals now here in australia i'm not sure about overseas but i know that different countries are really working towards creating a variety for their customers. We have a brand called Lowen, and uh, they basically have rice flakes, which is basically rice. Um, and you can buy some corn flakes, but again, you have to find non-genetically modified corn and also no added sugar no added sugar no added um, rice malt apple concentrate all that is sugar and sugar is really fiery really irritating for psoriatic disease it can pretty much within a day or two create lesions to become more red more sore more itchy joints become stiffer and more inflamed and more discomfort. So I would sincerely and strongly encourage anyone with psoriatic disease to come off sugar entirely. And, and that means when it's added into, into your um, packaging. So um, as far as fruit sugar, that's fine. I encourage people to have three pieces per day and they will have it sporadically. So you might have an apple, morning tea, you might have a pear, afternoon tea and after dinner you might have something else or you might make, you know, if you check out our website, salubre.com.au, we've got tasty um, apple and coconut muffins there that's, you know, got natural sugars in there and that's very delicious and uh, I don't make them because I think I'd eat them all at once. But I, I do believe that you can um, have an enjoyable diet without the need for sugar. Uh, and that means having less processed foods because that's where sugar is always hidden in. Uh, now, when we're talking about lasagna and rice and all that sort of thing, stick to your brown rice. There is low GI white rice available and there's also a lot of brands organ is a brand here in australia again i'm not sure if it's um distribution overseas but that has rice and corn lasagna sheets um <clears throat> excuse me there's quinoa and rice pasta quinoa is perfectly fine to have fresh quinoa in, a, in, in mixed in with your in your meals um buckwheat millet all those sort of things are really perfectly fine uh, if you follow us on facebook dr irene prantelos on, on facebook um, i did just recently put up a post of uh, bread that one of my patients gave me that um, is all basically made of nuts and seeds and you're probably better off making that bread versus buying something because even a millet bread 
um, they often add denatured gluten into it or they've got fermented foods in, um, fermented grains which act as a rising agent and that can also be irritating to skin and joints in some people so that's another thing i should actually mention fermented fermented foods are not ideal for psoriatic disease and i know there's this big push around fermentation because of gut flora and gut health and when it comes to psoriasis gut health is absolutely essential but i rectify gut health through probiotics and i do that um, there's two that i usually recommend to my patients um, it is a practitioner brand um, from metagenics uh, in australia I know there's Metagenics USA. I'm not sure about other countries. And that's called Probex and Immune Control, Ultraflora Immune Control. And that's great. It heals the, the, the small intestine, increases gut flora. And that's the way I usually recommend patients to improve their gut health that have psoriatic disease. And uh, when it comes to nuts, raw nuts. Raw nuts, please, no... no um, fried or you know because at the end of the day cashews and peanuts are actually fried because of their their, their um the the consistency they actually need to be fried uh, and the others are roasted but then you know you can roast them yourself i always encourage people to have raw and you can sprinkle some sea salt over or himalayan rock salt on them i'd rather you buy them salt free because then you can add good salt it doesn't matter how much salt you want to eat that's really good for your adrenals uh, but i would encourage always celtic sea salt or himalayan rock salt never use any other salt because that is actually detrimental to your health uh, okay so all this will be written in a, a blog post because i think there's a lot of content that i've already mentioned but um, it's important to understand basically what foods to avoid and what foods to include. Uh, now, the fact that we've got insulin resistance, uh, you know, moderate to severe psoriasis sufferers have insulin resistance, your plate really needs to be adjusted. I used to basically would have like a bowl of rice or a bowl of pasta or, you know, bowl of potatoes or something like that with meat and vegetables interspersed in that. But the reality is, is that when we have the insulin resistance, we need to eat food that very gradually releases the glucose into our bloodstream. Not a big whoosh of, um, of, of, of glucose into the, into the bloodstream. That will actually uh, upset our bodies and create inflammation. So what you need to do is essentially by allowing the slow release, you're having half a plate is vegetables, quarter of your plate is protein and the other quarter is low GI carbs and the rest of that would either be more vegetables or protein depending on what your physical activity was for the day. If you've gone to the gym and have done a workout or gone for a walk and you feel like you need a little bit of extra meat, that other eighth of a plate will be meat. If you feel you've had a pretty sedentary day and you're happy to just you know have more vegetables then that would be what would fill that portion of of the um, plate so pretty standard half your plate veggies quarter of your plate um, protein the other quarter is divided by low gi carbs and either extra vegetables or meat now that will release the the um, glucose slowly and actually reduce insulin resistance reduce inflammation and improve skin and improve joints i found by doing this, I had joint aches, and within two days, my joints, I have never had pains ever since. So it, it really is beneficial to your joints. I personally haven't been diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis, but I believe that that was inevitable because uh, of the way my joints were, were, were responding in the last few years. Uh, but I believe that I think that um, I've kept it at bay with, with, with the way I eat and obviously the way I take care of myself and, and what treatments I, I give myself as well. Okay, so one common question I get 
patients ask me is, do I need to eat like this forever? Do I need to stay on this diet forever? Now, the one thing that I never claim is that this is a cure. We, there is no cure. And cure means that, that we can't genetically change our, um, our DNA. So if this gene is presented, then it's, it's, it's presenting. What we can do is target and manage the disease. When we target and manage the disease, then essentially what we're doing is, is um, managing it and we're keeping it at bay, reducing the severity of flare-ups, reducing the frequency of flare-ups. And over a period of time, I was erythrodermic. I was covered from head to toe. And if I have a flare-up now, it won't ever get like that. I might get a couple of spots here and there and that's about it. So over a period of time, you can definitely reduce the severity of your skin condition. Uh, so yes, the answer is yes, you do have to stay on this diet forever. Um, and also the other reason is to make sure that leaky gut syndrome doesn't present again. Any irritation to your small intestine will actually lead to leaky gut syndrome. So, and that will essentially get unmetabolized toxins entering the bloodstream, which gets the autoimmune response happening. And then your body starts creating another flare up. So, so you need to look at this as, as a lifestyle and a dietary change, not I'm only doing this for a period of time to see this flare up subside. This needs to be continued and it's not a big deal. I don't necessarily think my patients find it difficult because their health is so much better. Do they never have sugar or, or a cake? No, they do. They will definitely have, you know, there might be a, a celebration of some sort and they might have this and then they find that they're perfectly fine. So they don't have the reaction that they would have before. So you do build up a resilience to it and you can have it, but it's not that consistency every single day and forming the basis of your diet. It's, it's a, a sporadic time here and there. And then you go back to your, your clean eating and healthy eating and then it, it, it doesn't become an issue. Okay. so. If, if um, like I said, this has been a little bit overwhelming, uh, there are some uh, uh, recipes on my website, salubre.com.au, and you can actually uh, have a read of, of what the, um, the, the recipes are and how you can make them and give them a go. Uh, also, I, as I said, I'm going to turn this um, podcast into a blog post so that people can actually visually see what foods um, should be avoided. Keeping a food diary is a really good indication as to what you're doing, uh, you, know, you know, what type of breakfast you're choosing, what snacks you're choosing, all this sort of thing. Um, can really be enlightening as to what you're eating because sometimes we it's mindless eating we're hungry we just eat and then we kind of move on uh, so that's that's also another thing you can do um, also for some people we do actually have I mean not for some people for everyone uh, but this, this is something that if this if you feel you need to to um, you want to do this but you just don't know where to start we have an eight-week program this eight-week program is um, five ways to target and manage psoriatic disease. And we work you through a step-by-step -step process. It's five steps, five modules. And really, the reality is you have lifetime access to this, this online program. It doesn't need to be done in eight weeks, but obviously we need a start and end. So we've done it in, a, in an eight-week period. And it really takes six weeks for your body to adjust to a new diet. So that's why we did it over an eight-week period. And in that, you get um, uh, the first is detoxing. Um, first week, so you're detoxing and cleansing the body. You're eating in this time. You're not starving yourself because I don't believe starving is, is um, beneficial. Um, then you start your anti-inflammatory diet. Then a couple of weeks later, we look at, at positive mindset and how we can change all that. Then we, we look into treatments and all, all the treatments that are available for you um, in the market. And then we also look at shopping for psoriatic disease. So what you need to do to, to fulfill uh, a clean and healthy lifestyle to supplement the dietary choices that you're making. And each of the eight weeks, you get um, the whole week's meal plans, shopping lists and recipes 
and it's 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 um done in a way to create a rotation where you get a very variety of food and nutrients and, and digestive enzymes that will help your body heal and rejuvenate and help the skin and joints so you can head on over to www.salubre.com.au to have a look at that and, and find out a little bit more about the online program or it's under the tab courses. The other one we have we ha uh, online, you can watch our webinar that's um, very detailed in what those steps are and that's for free if you want a little bit more understanding as to what needs to be done and there's a whole lot of resources books and cds and topical creams and um, scalp psoriasis treatments i mean we i really have uh, utilized all my experiences to provide various resources available for people at different stages in their journey depending on where you're at and of course if you want one-on-one -on -one assistance if you're local to to um, Surrey Hills in, in Victoria you can pop in the clinic and we can get you on a the right treatment or we, I also do Skype consults for people that are outside Melbourne and um, all over the world so you always email me and we can tee something up to get you started on um, your road to, to better skin and, and joints so that's that's all I want to talk about today I know there was a lot of information about that but um, it's really just an insight into what you can do to to start changing your your nutrition and uh, looking at your body in a way that it's um, you know creating fuel and, and energy from what we eat and essentially our, our diet is really important in that respect so thank you for tuning in to another episode of salubri skin with dr irene and be sure to email me at info at salubri.com.au if you have any questions take care for now